Good afternoon, everyone. I hope you can hear me clearly. Um, you know, it's, it's tough to kind of come into a, a room after quite a few of these presentations and talk about think big. Um, I think we're all, as, as D2C brands, looking at how big is big, right? Uh, and it's a tough question to answer. Um, I think this number is a number that you've seen on multiple presentations, so kind of keeping it as a common thread. What do you think, uh, what is the most obvious answer that you think of when you look at this number, 100 billion? Anybody? Addressable market 2025, okay. Anything else? Okay, so, you know, I think on most of the slides today that you've seen, you would have seen this number talking about the D2C addressable market for 2025. But it's also an interesting number because it's a number that also tells you what was the D2C sales, um, which we saw in the US last year, um, in UK the year before. So it's, it's a number that's, more real when we say that we've actually seen sales of those kind of numbers in those markets. And that's uh, one of the reasons this topic is about thinking big and selling global, right? So I'm just going to talk a little bit about, you know, cross-border e-commerce. Why, why is it something that's, in my opinion, a lot of what your brands that you work on should probably be looking at, right? If you look at domestic uh, e-commerce growth in most of the developed markets, uh, it's much slower than what you see as cross-border e-commerce growth. And this is um, something that is not a single year, not something that's just COVID-led. It's something that's been seen over a multi-year phenomenon. So from that point of view, that's one big data point to look at. Um, and in most of these developed markets, uh, the number of buyers who are actually buying uh, cross-border is in excess of 30 to 40 percent, um, which also, again, from an addressable market, opportunity size is massive. And it's expected that over the next three to four years, this is going to exceed you know, 20 percent of e-commerce in each of these developed markets. Obviously, you know, the big markets that we have seen, heard, known of, US, UK, Australia, um, Germany, Japan, these are all massive markets for cross-border trade. But these are not the only markets, right? Um, a lot of buyers that do buy cross-border um, buy products from platforms that may not have uh, direct presence in their country. And therefore, that market actually ma magnifies multifold. So this is, this is important. And also, if you look at it from a point of view of where India is, um, where are we looking at it from an exports point of view, that's something that's growing rapidly as well. So, the opportunity size, I think, is the most important thing for all D2C brands to consider. Uh, you have the product. Now, how do you get the product out there to all the consumers in all the various markets that are looking for products that you have, right? Um, and I think one of, one of some of the speakers earlier also mentioned that how long does it take for a brand to grow from, say, um, the first 10 or 50 crores to 100 crores or 200 crores, it probably takes you know, four years, seven years. Now, how do you further accelerate that? Here's one more opportunity to do that. So this is, um, you know, I think where I would say from a brand perspective, when you're looking at your strategy, what are the channels that you want to go out and sell on? Of course, you're selling on your own website, you're looking at domestic marketplaces, but I think it's an extremely important thing to also look at international markets. And when you look at international markets, they bring you not just the opportunity for massive amount of um, sale, but also the profitability levels are significantly different from what you see on domestic e-commerce. So I think that's as far as the opportunity goes. What are we doing uh, from an eBay perspective, right? And why is eBay something that is relevant? I'll stay very briefly on this slide. I think the most important number is the right top corner, what's the number of active buyers. Uh, when I say active buyers, these are not just buyers who come in occasionally, but are active on a regular basis, on three quarterly basis, and so on. So that's a lot of traffic that you guys have access to, and that's one of the reasons that we are here to, to talking about this. From an India team perspective, I think we've been working with brands and sellers across the length and breadth of the country for a pretty long period of time. 
There are obviously categories which um, India has a definite right to win in, and that's something they're very strong in. Uh, what's the objective of the cross-border team that is based out of India? Well, basically, A, of course, access. That's the easy one. Um, shipping, I think that's a big piece in this entire thing. How do we kind of bring all those options on the table together for you? Um, and the lastly, but not, you know, uh, something that you shouldn't miss out on is each of these markets have different seasonality and some of your products where you might find it challenging in certain seasons in a domestic market. Uh, from a cross-border point of view, that opportunity to look at it across the year give, is also a fantastic opportunity. Um, I'll briefly go through this slide. This, of course, does talk about how do we look at working with our brands and sellers through technology, getting the product on the platform, how do we kind of improve the experience that sell the buyers have as well as the sellers. Um, but I think one important area that I want to focus on are the last two ones. Um, how do you merchandise your product? And being able to give D2C brands a lot more control in being able to determine the approach that they want to take towards selling their product on the platform, be it uh, through promoted listing models, do it be it through stores. Uh, there are a whole host of options that give a significant amount of control. And the data that you're able to generate gives you a great understanding, A, about each of these markets, um, and B, it tells you when you are planning to scale into those markets, either directly or through any other channel, what's really the consumer pulse? So I think that's extremely important as a brand for all of you to consider. And the last thing is the global markets program. Um, I've just got a simple one slide here just to tell you what we want to do. Uh, all the way our teams are looking at it all the way across the journey for a brand, not just in terms of telling you what you need to sell, which is probably a very important part of the you know, initial onboarding and getting you on board. But how do we look at shipping as a solution? Um, and it involves many, many different aspects, including compliance across all of these different markets. Um, and that, you know, th that's where we work with a lot of our partners, bring that options to you, and it allows you to kind of really manage your entire investment in the business uh, with significant ease. So there's a lot more that we would like to talk about uh, on global markets from an eBay point of view, but I would urge most of you who are here to come and uh, meet us. We also have a stall here as well as there are a focus group uh, discussions, and we would really like to kind of take you through this in a little more detail and talk to you about it. Yeah. Thank you.